Now, in machine learning and NLP, the model we just studied is called the transformer decoder. The full transformer model is the complete picture on the right. That's the picture from the original paper that introduced the transformer model, Aswani et al. And the decoder part of the model is the part that is circled in purple. Sometimes the transformer is conditioned on a string that doesn't itself get predicted. And that conditioning is called the encoder. This is a term that's used very widely in NLP and machine learning, the encoder packs up the representation of a complex input into some form that then serves as conditioning for some other process. Uh, this is often used in, for example, machine translation or um, document summarization or any kind of transduction of an input from one form or another. The only difference between um, the encoder and decoder for present purposes is really the following, that in the encoder, the multi-headed attention is not masked. So whereas in our case, we had um, for language model prediction, we used masked multi-headed attention. That was that a word can only be attending in its when it gets transformed through a layer of the transformer, it attends only to previous words in the context. In the encoder model, in contrast, attention is not masked. So all words can attend to each other in the context. And in fact, actually, the transformer encoder model is behind one of the other most famous NLP models today, which is uh, BERT, which you may have heard of. It was developed uh, by Google. Uh, sometime in the general time window of GPT-2, the paper actually came out a bit earlier. BERT is behind one of the biggest advances in Google search algorithm last year um, that we've seen in a number of years, and it's a very well-known model you'll probably encounter in other situations. So the transformer model is not just behind GPT-2, but it's behind actually pretty much all of the state-of-the-art NLP models that are large scale today. So, uh, I want to spend a little bit of time now going back to GPT-2, and we're going to look at it in the context of targeted syntax testing. So we already looked at the case for subordination. Uh, I'm going to show you um, a little more. We um, are going to use this as an advertisement, in a sense, for the syntaxgym.org website. This is something that we've been developing in our own lab and may be useful for you in PSET 6. Uh, and it's a, it's a very fun resource, and we can use it for looking at um, testing language models at scale. So this is the Syntax Gym website. You can also use this as a, re as a resource. Uh, this video is a resource as you're doing PSET 6. There are a number of ways you can use it, but for example, there's a large number of syntactic test suites. And uh, for example, I can search we, uh, for the subordination case. And so this was the subordination uh, data that we uh, looked at before. So you can see the materials. We actually use many different items. So the example, like as the doctor studied the book, the nurse walked into the room. This was an example that I gave you, but there are many different items that are all controlled. So you can see the different conditions they're in. And um, you can look at the uh, behavior of different, many different models. So for example, the largest GPT-2 model, in this case, we can look, here's an example item for reference down here. But the thing that I wanna point you to is the main clause. Uh, so the main clause region is defined as being either the period for the no matrix clause versions uh, or the uh, entire uh, main clause for the matrix clause versions. And what you can see in the behavior up at the top is that first of all, when there is a matrix clause, the overall surprisal of that region is much higher. That's the blue and the green bars. That's not surprising because, well, there's just a lot more material to put probability mass over. But you can see that um, there is a, uh, you can see that the, um, that in this case, that having the, uh, having the subordinator makes the matrix clause less surprising. And you can also see that the red versus the yellow, so the, the red is when there is a subordinator, so the word as starts the sentence and there is no matrix clause, and the yellow is when there is no subordinator, so there's no as, and you can see that having as increases the surprisal of abruptly ending the sentence. So that's the, um, the, the syntax gym view of the subordination case that we saw before. We can now look at the other case, the other test suite that we, uh, that we investigated and uh, uh, that we looked at last time, and that's the uh, verb transitivity case. So these are things like when the dog struggled, the doctor took off the restraint versus when the dog bit. So struggled is uh, unambiguous in the sense that it is an intransitive verb, and so you're not inclined to use the doctor as the object of struggled. So struggled should make took off less surprising than, uh, than bit should, but the comma should reduce the surprisal, especially in the bit condition. So let's see if GPT-2XL does well on this. It turns out to do very well. 
Uh, so we can look at the effects here. Um, and the verb is this critical disambiguating region. So, um, and what you see is that by far the most surprising version of this is the ambiguous no comma version of this. So that's the case where as the criminal, the, as a criminal shot, the woman yelled. And so yelled is very surprising compared to the yellow version, ambiguous no comma. Ambiguous comma is the red version. That's much less surprising. And furthermore, the unambiguous no comma version is the green. That's also less surprising. So um, changing the first verb to be one that is intransitive also makes the second verb less surprising. So we can also see that GPT-2 has very sensible human-like garden pathing behavior. Uh, 